Welcome back to Block TV. It's time now for Links in the Chain. Today I'm joined in studio by special guest Ziv K. Nan, COO of Onera, and Alan Goran, founding partner of Draper Goran Home and co founder of Onera. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. All right, so we're going to kick off today and talk a little bit about the Onera network, what you guys are working on, what some of the focuses are. I think I might start off with you, Ziv, just because we had a good conversation about this prior. Mm. Tell us a little bit about what the latest news coming out in and around the project is. So Onera, in a, in a sense, is, uh, Onera is an institutional investment network using blockchain technology where each one of the nodes uh, is a regulated financial institution. This is a new approach to an old industry. Basically, we're taking uh, the, the, the technology that in, we know that works, the DLT technology, and we're implementing it on uh, a financial institution network, uh, which basically means that uh, the transactions um, uh, using the, the power of uh, DLT become uh, much, much swifter, the settlement is, is immediate, uh, distribution of dividends, everything we know from the DLT uh, world that, that work. And, and, and one of the problem, biggest uh, problem that it solves is that um, it basically brings a lot of asset that currently is uh, under the radar. Uh, this is from the world of private investments mm -hmm. and, and bring them to an uh, open uh, network uh, between financial institutions. For example, if I'm doing transaction today to invest uh, in a real estate building or in, a, in a, uh, any other asset, usually that transaction would eventually uh, find itself in the, the holding, would find itself record on some Excel sheet in, you know, in a lawyer's computer at the end. Uh, what we're doing at the Onera, we, we, um, we're taking those investments out of the basement and basic, basically allowing uh, those holdings to be represented by a digital uh, uh, token representing uh, the, the, the asset. This is a new concept uh, to a very old uh, industry. Once the token is represented, um, or the holding is represented by the token, then you can have everything that DLT technology uh, brings uh, to this space um, and, and financial institution we found are the perf perfect match uh, to execute uh, such program because uh, financial institution for example can validate uh, the legal rights of the token holder mm -hmm. okay so I can I for example can create a token uh, for the London Bridge I can sell you there or sell alone the, the, the token to the London Bridge but it doesn't actually mean that you uh, own the London Bridge. Someone needs to validate uh, mm -hmm. that the owner of the token is actually uh, the owner of, of, the, of the bridge. This is where financial institution comes in place. They're really good at doing investment. They really do good at compliance uh, and verifying transaction. Um, and, and, and they also do like the, the, where everything would come to do with secondary market rates or uh, network basically allows all regulations to be implemented in form of smart contracts. So this is very important, especially when you do like uh, the secondary uh, transfer of, of securities. There's a lot of regulations there that keep governs the when can you uh, transfer to how many people and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, so everything is regulated through smart contracts and actually what's amazing about that uh, is that not only financial institutions are interested in this technology but regulators are also mm. because of that uh, uh, automation of procedures and regulation that we are able, this is basically uh, imagine a share that enforce its own regulation. Mm. Uh, so a very new concept. Um, um, and there's a lot of interest from the financial industry. Alon and I were just uh, at a conference in London. Uh, do you want to say a few words about mm -hmm. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By all means. <laughs> so uh, it, it was it was incredible. So we we're actually at a conference in London that was for institutional players in the space. So it was for the bankers, for mm -hmm. the investment bankers, for the investors that are investing in in these deals. And so I ended up presenting um, presenting the latest product from Onera on there and walking the banks through the issuance platform mm -hmm. and how they could either implement their API or our API to to create these issuances or use the issuance platform that we provide for free to banks. And what's very, very cool about it is I went through the process of 
how they can issue these securities. And I showed a thing called KYA. Mm -hmm. So KYA in the Onero world means know your asset. Right. And so when you look at the actual asset in the system, you can see the PPM, you can see the details, you can see everything you need to know to understand what you're buying. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really exist in the current Ethereum-based token world. Right. The, the PPMs usually exist on the website, buried behind multiple links, and you don't really know or aren't notified if anything changes um, when something does change. So, so we provide that. And then we showed how uh, the next step was actually issuing uh, these tokens to an investor. So we showed how an investor can log in using any one of the 2,000 banks single sign-ons we already integrated. And then it takes you through the process. And when you go to invest, what you see is, is sort of the, the, the uh, process of it going. You mm. see the little animation. And while that animation is going behind the scenes, there's a thing called the regulation app store. And that's where the regulations are actually uh, uh, sitting. And so when you make an investment or when you go to buy an issued security, you're actually, you go to buy it and then before it actually issues it, it takes you through the regulation, makes sure that you are allowed to be buying this right. asset in the jurisdiction that you're in, in the jurisdiction that the asset is in, and then it will enforce regulation. If you're not allowed to, it'll tell you. If right. you're allowed to, it will issue it. And it happens in seconds. And then after that happens, it's, it's all good, and the thing you don't see when you go through the product is anything about blockchain, right. anything about private keys, anything about DLT or, or any of the terms that we all use and know, but you get all the benefits of it. And that's why the banks like it. Digital securities for everyone. Right, and I want to pull it back, because clearly you guys have thought yeah. long and hard about the technology itself and how to implement it, but I want to pull it back to that conversation about that accessibility, because obviously enterprise solutions are utilizing uh, DLT yeah. are, are sort of the hot buzz issue at the moment. Yeah. Everyone wants to uh, get involved, particularly those inside the sort of uh, blockchain world yeah. and get it out to the mainstream. It looks like that's what you guys are doing, but what sort of reception are you getting from those big players already in the market? So, so as you know, when they're looking at the Ethereum-based stuff and they're looking at some of the other products, what they're scared of is the same thing that benefits them, right? Mm -hmm. But they technically all are these institutions that need to live in their walled garden. So if it's not permissioned, they're not going to participate. So we, we built this on Hyperledger Fabric. It's mm -hmm. a customized version of it. It's the first one that has public facing uh, mm -hmm. blockchain. I think maybe some other people are trying to implement public versions of, of Hyperledger now. But when we first launched the testnet, it was the first one that like actually had public and private. Mm -hmm. So banks like it because they could live within their walled garden. But then once a security is issued, it could become a public, uh, a public stock or, a, or transferred publicly. Right. Um, and, and they like the enforced regulation, and we kind of embraced them and catered this for that, right? This, we do have it where the regulated financial institutions are the nodes on the network, like, like Zeep was so saying. Two years ago, you would go to a financial institution, you would go to a bank and speak about, back then it was uh, a security token, now it's more digital, the right. effort more, more like a digital securities or smart securities. You, know, you would go to a bank and they would look at you, <laughs> are you from the ICO industry? <laughs> you immediately became a suspect. Uh, uh, but now uh, it's really interesting, you know, we were in that conference and we now see a slide by Bank of America. Uh, so Bank of America had a representative there and Citi had a representative there and ING and SOCGEN uh, and uh, JP and every bank that you, you know, possibly think of and Deutsche Bus was there mm -hmm. uh, examining huge development uh, as you know we, we used to think about the German as very conservative uh, but what Deutsche uh, presented there was that they amended the legislation in, in order to allow the trading of digital securities um, um, London Stock Exchange uh, the representative there was I also met him in previous conference in the in the past are really active uh, in this space um, and, and and you see that there is uh, there, there is a substantial uh, development uh, and, and embracing of, uh, of this technology by, uh, by financial institutions and even, you know, between you and I, some sort of a FOMO uh, <laughs> of the one that, that, you, that, that, that are not there, you know. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's, if it's FOMO related, but we also have seen it, uh, for example, in Israel, the Israeli Securities Authority, not for institutional, right. but, but from, the, from the regular, the Israel Securities Authority, uh, just published a paper inviting uh, fintech companies uh, to apply and suggest solutions for uh, a DLT exchange. Uh, Onea presented 
uh, mm -hmm. at the uh, Israeli Securities Authority annual conference. Uh, that's a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough. Uh, the, the, the regular is so much embracing uh, of this technology um, and it might even solve a bigger uh, problem for uh, specifically European uh, financial institution where the current uh, the demographic and this was also presented in the conference the demographics and and the and the financials so um, we see that there's uh, there might be accumulating debt there and and, and there's a, a real need uh, to save uh, cost of uh, right. issuance and infra infrastructure and this technology might be so the solution. So then, Alan, I want to throw to you and ask yeah. the question. I mean, looking out to best projections or maybe reasonable projections, but looking out to a future in which the sort of technology being you know, implemented yeah. and put forward by Onera is implemented on a larger scale, what's yeah. the sort of potential scope into the longer term? Where do we so, look five to 10 years down the line? Yeah, so I mean, I, I had a presentation because in, in a previous company where we showed just the US alternative investment market. Mm -hmm. and so there's $7 trillion in assets at the time. This was probably 10 years ago. So till now, it, it's much bigger. But that's just one tiny market, right? And then there's the derivatives market, the real estate market, that every single market that has securities, which is basically every investment opportunity in the world, is going to go digital. Right. It absolutely has to. We're, 10 years ago, I thought things were going digital when we would docu-sign a document. That's no longer good enough. That doesn't actually mean it exists somewhere, it can't be verified somewhere. What if I lose the piece of paper? What if you know, I lose my phone after I docu-sign something? Right. Like, what happens? So this, this is, is a necessary thing. And I believe you know, the way we're doing it is the way that's going to, to create the movement to then lower the barriers for everyone else. You know? On the one side of the whole thing, right, we're talking about DeFi right. and how we can completely disintermediate everything. And that's happening in certain ways. But as we know with technology, every single major technology starts on the enterprise level and then works its way into the home. Uh, and that's how computers work. That's how, how, how every single sort of trend has worked in the past. And that's what's going to happen here. It's not going to start. There's going to be examples and cool things that happen with small companies raising money through sure. security token offerings or digital security offerings, whatever they call it. But it's really going to start on the institutional level when there's the few hundred million dollar issuances or taking something that already exists that's worth billions of dollars and digitizing it. And then from there, as we all get comfortable with it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spread to the masses. And the fact that it enforces regulation will mean that it's going to be easier for startups to get in because it's easier to understand. It'll be automated. Right. It'll be simple. It'll be cheaper. Because uh, right now, to be honest, lawyers cost way too much money. And if you do it wrong, or if it's public, at least in the United States where I am, you are now obligating yourself to audited financials, right. things that crush startups because they're too expensive. Uh, so a potential yeah. to uh, really tokenize and, and change the entire Everything. world and how it's all laid out. Uh, mm -hmm. Alon, Ziv, I want to thank you gentlemen so much for breaking down this uh, fascinating new world that's emerging, growing. Interested to see what comes out of the Onera network in the future. Gentlemen, thank you so much. For those thank at you. home, stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest in news and information. I'm Asha Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter 